If there's only one thing I could change on my Bamboo Lab X1C printer, it would have to be the nozzle wiper. For PLA and ABS, it works really well, but with PETG, it is a problem, and I haven't been able to find a solution for it yet. There are a few good options out there now, so let's take a look at three of the most popular designs and subject them to non-stop filament changes to see if any of them can wipe with 100% success with that sticky PETG. So, stick around. PETG loves to ooze, it loves to string and stick as well. And sticking is a good thing for layer adhesion. Unfortunately, the current wiper uses a piece of PTFE tubing on a plastic kind of a spring, which tries to pinch off the filament. The roller design then forces the PETG to ride up against the side of the nozzle. I was able to solve this problem temporarily by installing the Bichu Panda Jet, which did a better job of cooling the filament below the nozzle before wiping but then I upgraded to the Highflow E3D hot end with the Obsidian with that X in their nozzle. And there is no question that it outperforms the stock nozzle, but the filament likes to stick to it even more than the stock. And unfortunately I can't switch back and I also don't really want to switch back either. This is important to solve because I'd like to start using Hue Forge and I've already bought a whole bunch of PETG in different colors to do it. And I need to make sure that this problem is solved before I can be confident that those prints will turn out. There are so many options out there already. It's like trying to pick a cereal to buy at the grocery store. Luckily, nothing beats Frosted Lucky Charms. I've picked three of the highest rated options out there. The over-engineered nozzle wiper plus poop sweeper. This part and the name are apparently both over-engineered. This one is nothing like anything I've seen before. It uses PTFE tubing instead of silicone. Each cut to a specific shape and size using a 3D printable template. One thing to be careful with with this design is that there is this option with a single slot for a PTFE tube. And then we have this one as well with the dual. I'm going to go with the dual. It's supposed to do a better job of cleaning the nozzle. The next is the Ultimate Nozzle Wiper version 2. And this one is super simple and minimalist. I really like it. It uses a silicone tube which is cut to shape with a 3D printable jig as well. And this piece of silicone just easily pushes right over top and it has these little tiny teeth in there as well to make sure that it grabs on nicely. And the last one is called the Wiper version 3.2 and it uses the silicone wiper from the Bamboo A1. Most new printers use something like the silicone wafer idea and I like this one too because it's simple and there have been quite a few changes leading up to this version. So my hope is that all the issues have been worked out on this one by now. I thought this was updated while I was making this video, but it turns out that I just picked the wrong print profile. There are some old print profiles in there. So I went ahead and found the new one, version 3.3. And there is a little bit of a change from what I can tell. Version 3.2 is so thin that it didn't print properly in this area in here compared to the new version, which is solid. I'm using my Bamboo PETG filament and it's all been pre-dried. Now when I spoke to E3D about PETG sticking to the obsidian nozzle, the suggestion was to dry the filament. Unfortunately, there was no change because I was already doing that. I'm also going to make sure that around the nozzle and also under the sock is completely clean for each type of wiper that we test. With the stock wiper in place and the nozzle clean, I've run four prints, each with 27 non-stop filament changes and I have different colors loaded in as well. That way we can also have a different purge amount. Now for the stock setup, it starts out strong. And what I've noticed is that over time, the nozzle becomes caked with PETG, more so on the left hand side, that hot sticky PETG will grab, hold, and occasionally pull the poop into the chamber. These weren't the worst examples I've ever seen, but it does show the problem pretty well. Sometimes these can actually get jammed into the lead screws, causing a problem for homing, and they also get compressed pretty badly as well. No matter which print, we were getting one, two, or even three poops within the build chamber. Sometimes they're stuck within the print as well, like in this case. And sometimes there's big blobs stuck on the nozzle, again, like there is in this case as well. Since this is the easiest to install, I'm going to put this one in first. For the Ultimate Wiper version 2, aside from having to buy way too much silicone tubing, 
It is so simple, it couldn't really be easier to install and because it has silicone, the filament shouldn't want to stick to it at all, which is a problem for anything that has exposed plastic within the poop chute area. My only real concern with this design is that the silicone may act just like the stock wiper and push the filament up against the nozzle. On the other hand, that has two layers of silicone to go through, so hopefully that will prevent this from happening. I'm gonna run the test six times instead of the four times I ran on the stock nozzle for each, and that's to make sure it's a little bit harder. That's because we already know that the stock setup is a problem, but I'm not sure how many changes it could take to cause a problem for any of these. As the nozzle gets more caked with filament, the problem tends to get worse and worse over time. For the first five prints, it looked like it was performing really well up until the sixth one, and then it started to poop in the chamber and kind of get hung up here and there. One thing about this design is it's putting these crumbs all over the build chamber, on top of the build plate, down below as well, and even up on top of this ledge here. I am surprised at how well this worked to keep the nozzle clean. It seemed to be able to launch that buildup that was on the nozzle right off and all over the build chamber, which also really isn't ideal, but it's quite a bit better than poops going everywhere as well. It did drag two of them into the chamber total over 162 color changes, which is quite an improvement over the stock setup. The installation was easy, but it looks like these are too high. Maybe they're not seated down all the way. They're gonna hit that nozzle sock. So I'm gonna take this back off and I'll recut these and try it again. I think I managed to fix these. It looks like they're about at the right height now. But unfortunately with the Bichu Panda Jet installed, this is a little bit too tall and it might rub on the bottom. So I'm gonna take a file and take this down just a little bit rather than having to reprint it. The lower section was at about the right height for the nozzle, but these came to a really sharp point and it looked like it was going to tear apart that nozzle socks. So I just knocked off the very sharp top edges. I, I'm assuming that I just can't get these deep enough. I was using a pair of pliers, but it was really doing a number on these tubes. So this one's supposed to have a break-in procedure, but I can't find the file anywhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run the six tests just like we did on the last one. None of my videos are complete without including my screw-ups. I got really distracted dealing with the height here. I completely forgot to put these PTFE tubes in and I ran all the tests without them in there. And I think they're kind of important. So I'm gonna to have to rerun all of the tests, unfortunately. So let's go through those real quick. There was little to no difference on the second batch, even with the tubes installed. If we compare the E3D nozzle with the stock nozzle, stock one is quite a bit more vertical. This one here is more horizontal. So that could also be part of the problem that we're running into. And part of the reason that some of the nozzle wipers aren't working as well as they're supposed to be. For the wiper version 3.3, since this one uses wipers that we know already work, it has that potential. And I guess my only worry is that we have to cut it so short. The tab added to the back of the build plate comes up and it gets in the way of this being any longer, unfortunately. And the nozzle position after scanning gets in the way on the inside of the chute. I think we have a problem. It's come right off. I'm going to have to pause this and see if I can get that back on there. I had some problems with the pad moving off. So if you're going to try this one, you can use some super glue or take a moment to smooth down the surface before sticking that on. This model is printed upside down and because of that, the surface is not going to be completely smooth. Overall, this one did not perform too badly. It was better than the stock setup by quite a bit, but not perfect with three poops over 162 changes. It also spread little bits all over the chamber as well, just not as bad as the first one. So if anyone's having this problem, the wiper I'd recommend right now is the Ultimate Wiper version two. And yes, a small amount of cleanup is required, 
but I'm okay with it because I know that the print is more likely to turn out. And if we look at that silicone, there is no damage to it even after all of those filament changes. So that's a good sign that this one will also last. Even if it didn't last, I have a lot of silicone tubing left. So normally I like to design my own solutions, but there were so many out there already that it didn't make a lot of sense, at least not without finding out if anyone had been able to create a solution that actually worked. And I think this one's pretty close. So for now, I think this one is the one to beat. If you'd like to see me try and solve the problem completely, let me know in the comments down there below and I will make a follow-up video with my own design. We can also look at changing the wiping G code. I would prefer to leave things as close to stock as possible unless we don't have another option though. Nice work tech nerd on this design. I will leave a link down there below if you want to download and print your own version. We are about 10,000 subscribers away from that 100,000 goal by 2025. And if you are enjoying this content, consider subscribing and helping the channel to get there. Thanks as well to each of my patrons for helping to make these videos possible. And a special thanks to those of you at the top of this list who have supported me since the beginning of this journey. I really appreciate the help to make this channel a success. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and we will see you on the next one.